Hi, I'm Dr Justin Varney. I'm the Director of Public Health for Birmingham City Council and I'll be taking you through today's webinar for our Boulder Healthier Champions Plus programme about mental health and wellbeing this winter. So why are we talking about it at this time of year? Well, in the winter we often see people struggling a little bit more with their mental health than during the summer. This can be because of seasonal affective disorder called SAD, which affects about two million people in Britain. But it can also be because that's, this festive time of year can be a period in which people feel particularly lonely or difficult time when people haven't got social networks or it brings back memories of people that you've lost during the year. It's also a time in which we reflect and sometimes that isn't always positive. The other side of this festive season is that people often get into debt and there are financial pressures particularly this year with the cost of living so there are plenty of reasons to be a bit more alert as a champion about mental health and well-being in the winter. So we thought we'd share this video uh, from mine to just give a bit of a context when we talk about mental health what are we really talking about and what are mental health problems? We're Mind, the mental health charity. We're here to make sure everybody with a mental health problem has somewhere to turn for advice and support. In the past, people thought if you had a mental health problem, you would never feel better. You might meet people who still feel this. Maybe you feel this way about yourself. Mental health is just like physical health. Everybody has it and needs to look after it. You have good mental health if you're able to think, feel, and react in the ways that you need and want. You might need support with your mental health if you are finding the way you're thinking, feeling, or reacting is more difficult or even impossible to cope with. This might be because of things that are happening in your life right now. A traumatic event may affect your mental health in a big way too, even years later. We are all different. Everybody experiences a huge variety of feelings, thoughts and emotions as part of their normal life. But how and when we have them can be really different depending on who we are. Some of us can find these harder to cope with. This can be because of our upbringing and childhood, past experiences or the things happening in our lives right now. That's why it's important that only you, someone who knows you really well, or someone who is qualified, gets to say when you need help. If your feelings, thoughts and reactions are getting in the way of how you want to live, if you feel things aren't right, if you feel like you need help, you can ask for it. We're not going to pretend it's easy. Mental health problems can change your life and for some they can be overwhelming. But that's why Mind is here. We're going to face it with you. We'll listen, give support and fight your corner. To find out more, visit mind.org.uk. So I hope that was helpful in just giving you a bit of context about mental health and helping just to start out so we're all on the same page. Mental health refers to our cognitive, behavioural and emotional well-being. And as the person in the video said, it's just as important as physical health. Looking after our mental health is important so that we can enjoy life and involves balancing those things and makes us able to respond to the challenges that we experience in everyday life. It's that ability to bounce back and to respond when life throws a curveball. Often we have periods when we don't feel great and that's normal, but it's when those periods go on and we get stuck that it becomes a problem. Around one in four people experience a mental health issue every year, and it can be caused by a whole range of things. There are also different types of mental health issues that people experience. So the slide deck, which you'll be able to access as a champion afterwards, has a lot of definitions in it and some of the data out there as well. So I'm not going to dwell on this in the webinar, but do take some time to read through the slides and follow some of the links that are there, because they will help you to get a sense of the scale of mental health issues in the community. To some extent for all of us, that makes us feel a little bit less, less alone when we're struggling with our own mental health. I mentioned some of the things that potentially drive mental health issues. And they range from loneliness, big life changes like bereavement, physical health issues, for example, um, having a long term condition. But also if there's a sudden change. So we know that when people have a stroke or a heart attack, that can make them particularly vulnerable to having worse mental health. 
There are also the factors around us, family relationships, social networks, our workplace, all of those things play a part. And more and more, we're starting to understand the negative side of social media. And much as the internet allows us to do some wonderful things, like this webinar, for example, it can also be a really negative space that can really damage people's mental health as well. I thought it was useful just to explore a little bit some of the overlaps between anxiety and depression, because these are probably two of the most common mental health conditions that we see. And although there are very similar symptoms, there are also some differences. And this slide really sets out some of those differences, and I think makes it a bit easier to separate the two in our head. You can, of course, have anxiety and depression at the same time, but there are some differences in that sense that depression is usually characterised by those feelings of fatigue, of loss of interest, guilt, low self-esteem, um, whereas anxiety is much more associated with those kind of panic attacks, rapid pulse, palpitations, feeling, shortness of breath, that tension in muscles. So there are slightly different presentations for different conditions, but sometimes you do get them both together. And in both anxiety and depression, you often see this excessive worrying, some difficulty thinking, restlessness and agitation, and of course, social withdrawal. As we mentioned a little bit before, but I'll mention again throughout the presentation today, physical and mental health are equally important and there is a huge overlap between them. We know that a significant proportion of people who've got physical health conditions face mental health challenges and we know that a significant proportion with mental health issues struggle with their physical health. And that's why it's so important when we talk about no physical health without mental health and trying to get better parity, particularly in the work that we do in health and social care between thinking between the two and thinking more proactively around supporting people to be mentally healthy. We couldn't go through without talking about what to do if you've come across someone in crisis or you're in crisis yourself. And the important information is included in the slide. In the same way that we shouldn't stay at home and sit on a heart attack, when someone's having a mental health crisis, that's not something to try and manage on your own at home. Reach out for the help. It is there 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And we've included in the slide deck and the supporting information for you as champions, some of the support services that are available. So let's move into what the ask is of you as champions in this space. And it's important to say, although many of you are health and social care professionals, please do keep in mind your realm, your sphere of competence and don't act outside it. We're not asking you all to immediately become psychiatrists or psychotherapists. Focus on the champions is to help connect people and make every contact count by increasing awareness, showing understanding and signposting people to support. And that will be familiar to you for those of you who've joined us with previous webinars. So in the context of mental health specifically, what is our ask of you as champions? Well, following the same format as previous webinars, first of all, we want you to talk about mental health. Talk about it with the people you work with. Make it part of your regular conversations. And don't forget to talk about your own mental health and mental health in, in the teams you work with. Because often this is the bit we forget when we're talking about mental health, is it's something that happens to us every day, not just something that happens to the people we work with. The second is around connecting people to support when they need help with their mental health. And that's not just about their mental well-being, it's also about connecting them to mental health services. And then the third is to feed back to us some of the information you're gathering as champions so that we can help better design more support for citizens and make it more appropriate. So let's talk about talking. Talking about mental health with people you work with, making it part of regular conversations and don't forget your colleagues as well. Sounds easy, but we know actually this is one of the areas that many professionals struggle with. Opening up a conversation about mental health is something that many um, professionals feel nervous about, especially if it's not your area of specialist practice. As Boulder Health Champions Plus, it's important you do remain within your area of competence and it's your responsibility to judge that. Many professional bodies provide specific advice about mental health awareness that fits within your realm of practice. So if you're a champion that comes from a physio background, for example, or a nursing background, or you're a volunteer working with an organisation, please look at the information that's available in your specific area, because a lot of 
um, professional bodies, a lot of organisations now are providing really good advice and support to help staff and volunteers be more proactive talking about mental health alongside physical health. We've included in the webinar a couple of case studies in the slide packs for you, and these are taken from a range of support sources. This is one from the Royal Society of Public Health, which talks about how they've used training to support professionals to have conversations about mental health and how that was put into practice around a, a fictional character, George, who was bereaved from his wife and struggling. Because in this situation, the healthcare professional asked about how George was doing after the bereavement, offered some support, and although that was declined, when there was a follow-up appointment, offered it again, and then it was taken up. And we know that in some many cases of health and well-being, you know, the first offer isn't always the one that's taken up. Sometimes people need to think about it and be ready to be able to take the support that's available. But by normalising the conversation about mental health and making it part of what you do every day in your professional practice, you can really make a difference and you can make those opportunities count in terms of people being able to access help. Another example in the slide pack comes specifically from the Royal Society of Pharmacy, and this is a, a sorry, Royal Pharmaceutical Society. This is an example of a, a professional body which has produced some really good guidance for pharmacists and pharmacy professionals about how to provide information about mental health in the pharmacy setting. And it's just one of many examples. So do look at your professional body if you belong to one, because there is often some really good resources out there. If you want to find out more about what's going on in Birmingham there's and what training support is available, there are modules on the um, Health Education England on e-learning for health. There's also mental health first aid training available across the country. Many organisations pay for staff to be able to do this. So do look at and talk to your organisation about what support is available, as well as support and training sessions from our local Birmingham Solihull Mental Health NHS Foundation Trust. So there are ways that you can get more experience and find out a little bit more about how to integrate that mental health conversation into your daily practice. So we thought we'd share a little short video uh, about mental health first aid. In the salon I have all sorts of conversations. We're dealing with people one-to-ones all day, every day. We're in a very unique position of trust, so people often open up to us. It's so important in society to be aware about mental health because we all have mental health. As a teacher, I've always wanted to help young people, but I've not always known how to do that. That's why I took the Youth Mental Health First Aid course. Working in the police could be very challenging work. The Mental Health First Aid training gives you the knowledge and the skills to signpost someone to get the help that they might need. In my role as talent leader, I see the amount of pressure that people are under in our high performance culture. I thought it would be a really useful thing for me to do to understand the effects of that pressure on our people. We're trained on health and safety all the time, and this is the perfect addition to that training. Mental Health First Aid England offers courses for all industries and specifically focuses on providing initial help for co-workers, families and friends. The two-day Mental Health First Aid course gave us the confidence and the ability to react in the correct way when people are talking to you about their mental health. In the police it's really helped us to recognise when somebody might be experiencing mental ill health and for us to know what to do next. The training's personally helped me being able to approach individuals, not just to ask them how their day's going, but to really talk to them and to offer some support. Just a week after I'd completed the training, a pupil came to me with suicidal feelings. Having done the training, I was in a position to calmly respond to that situation. It's an incredible feeling to know that you've done something to help a young person who's struggling. Mental. Health. First. Aid. England. So mental health first aid is just one of the options that's available in terms of training. There are others out there and it's important to say there are other courses. Um, but in Birmingham, we have invested in providing mental health train the trainer 
training uh, to many organisations over the last uh, 12 to 18 months as part of a specific grant we received from the Department of Health and Social Care. So there are plenty of opportunities locally to go and do mental health first aid training uh, if that's the course that appeals to you. There's also, it's important to say, suicide prevention training, uh, which focuses on awareness of suicide prevention and how to respond if you encounter someone who is actively suicidal. So do talk to your organisation about what training support can be made available for you. So we say again, as the champions, this is around raising your awareness, signposting and having those opening conversations. It's not training, to you, training you to be a mental health professional. There are plenty of those out there. Uh, within your own organisations, do ask if there's an established referral pathway, um, but it's a good opportunity once you've watched this webinar to go back to your organisation and go, you know what, what do we do? How do we help people that disclose mental health issues? How do we help them get to support? An example of this is Michelle's story. And again, this is drawn from, from a case study uh, where she had had a very traumatic past, uh, delivery in the past, and uh, when she was coming through that, um, she was really struggling, but finally found someone that she could talk to about her mental health and then was able to be connected into perinatal mental health service where the specialist mental health professionals were able to work with her and process that. And that's an example about how you often things happen and we don't necessarily process them straight away and the mental health impacts of, of that significant event in her life, that traumatic delivery, didn't necessarily come out straight away and in this case it was sometimes afterwards that it started to problem become, become an issue for her and affect her mental health and that's why this becoming part of your everyday practice is really important because you never know whether you might be the person that's having the interaction when the individual you're working with suddenly says, you know what, this is what's going on for me, I do need help, I'm ready for help. Um, and your ability to be able to connect them to help is really important. The slide deck contains a lot of information about different support services and we've done it in the slide deck so you can print these off and have them in the desk or pin them to the wall, but they're there primarily to provide web links and to provide information about some of the helplines that are out there, but also some of the specific support around areas like loneliness, bereavement, some of the drivers, the things that we know impact on mental health, um, and the support that's available about things like financial insecurity um, and physical inactivity, issues with sleep, uh, and also advice about how to work with social media, check your mental health through that. So there's quite a lot of information in the slide pack, but I won't dwell on it in the webinar today. The final part uh, is very much around feeding back to us and part of the role of being a champion is it's a two way journey. We don't want you just to receive the information uh, and wander off. We want you to be able to tell us how this works for you. What have you learned as you put this into practice, particularly in the Boulder Healthier Champions Plus programme? This is really important to us to understand how we can better support you to make this part of your everyday work and what support you need. So please do email the team and tell them as you've reflected on this webinar and over the coming weeks and months as you started to put it into practice, what have you learned? What have you heard from people? Has it made a difference and how could we support you better in the future? Now I want to change a little bit of tact and this is slightly different from what we do in a normal webinar but I thought it was really important for this topic that we talk a bit about self-care. Let's be honest and I talk as a, a doctor um, to you, it is stressful working with patients whether you're a doctor or a nurse or a physio or an OT or a porter or receptionist in GP practice or you're a social worker or a care worker. You know, all of these frontline jobs are stressful. You're dealing with people every day. You're supporting people every day who are going through difficult times. And we use the language to talk about that, like, talk about emotional labour. The fact that when we're interacting with people, we're hearing this affects you, affects your soul, affects my soul when I was working with patients on the front line. And we know that there's a well-established evidence base that particularly amongst health and social care professionals, mental health is worse. And these are just two sets of research, both from the UK, which is the, the image uh, to the right of your screen, the, the paler images around some of the mental health issues um, affecting doctors in the UK, particularly GPs. Um, 
and the the grey, the darker image is from a survey of, of doctors in the US. Uh, and both of these highlight the challenges uh, around mental health uh, in our own profession. So it's important that when we talk about mental health, we don't ignore the fact that this affects us as well. Um, and that's why we included in the um, the call to action for our champions today to talk to your workplace, to talk to your colleagues, to talk to your teams uh, about mental health in your workplace, because there are things that employers can do and there's things we can do with each other. And this is just an example of one of the toolkits that's available to support um, people in the workplace, particularly from NHS employers. And I have to say all the resources that sit around this are quite impressive. There's some really useful information for organisations to to support uh, staff around their mental health and well-being. One example of this is the How Are You Feeling NHS app and I have to say you can access it even if you don't work for the NHS so do you have a go. What it, it does is it starts by asking you a simple question it says how are you feeling and the three emojis the red, the yellow and the blue represent the on the edge a good day or on a go slow and then it takes you through a couple more simple option multi-choice questions um, and then it starts to feed back to you on what can you do that makes a difference and what might help you today what it doesn't do is say oh it's all going to be all right it's fine ignore it it says no let's list let's respond to what you're saying uh, and try to give you some really practical and sensible advice so i really recommend that to people it's a really good resource to use there's also quite a lot of stuff that's come through from particularly during the pandemic you remember we spent most of the last two years obsessing about PPE, personal protective equipment, um, and that's really protect people from infection. PPE is now being used to talk about psychological PPE, how to protect your mental health and well-being when you're working in an environment in which there's a lot of emotional labour. And these are just two visuals from different healthcare organisations across the world that I thought were really useful in kind of demonstrating this. But it's an interesting conversation to have in your team. What's our psychological PPE? What is it we do as a team that's supporting our psychological health? And perhaps using that as an opening point for your conversation with one of these diagrams or any of the others that you can find on the internet. I think it's a, a useful kind of way to have the conversation. Uh, and perhaps it can be a safe way to have the conversation if you're working in an organisation that perhaps doesn't feel necessarily open to talking about mental health. Now, I'm not going to play the video, uh, full video from uh, Dr Goodman, but I think it was an important one to share because this is the reason we had this section added to this month's webinar series. And when we talk about mental health, really important we talk about our own and particularly for Boulder Healthier Champions Plus, um, because many of you work in health, social care and education. Uh, in our voluntary and community sector and you're in organisations and you're in roles where you have high levels of emotional labour and sadly too often we don't talk about our own mental health and we don't reach out to to others. So let's just listen to a, a short expert excerpt from Dr Goodman's talk. My name is Dr Jake. I'm a resident physician who treats mental illness, and I take medication for my mental health. And by the way, I'm proud of it. With sweaty palms and trembling hands, I posted this on social media a few months ago. The post was accompanied by a selfie of me wearing scrubs with a pill in my mouth and an explanation of why I posted it. So why on earth would I post that? Well, to begin to answer that question, let's go back 20 years. You see, when I was growing up, I always knew I was going to be a doctor. Like most kids, though, I also wanted to be a professional soccer. As I said, I'm only going to give you a taster of Dr. Goodman today. Um, the video goes on for about 15 minutes. It's really worth watching if you have time. It, I'm really impressed by Dr. Goodman's honesty and his authentic sharing of his experience, lived experience in mental health as a healthcare professional. Um, sadly, in my own career, I have lost colleagues to mental health, and it is something that I'm very passionate about, that as professionals and leaders, we talk about our mental health honestly and authentically, particularly with those we work with, um, because it makes it easier for others to talk about it as well. 
So I want to thank you for your time today. Um, as I said, there's a lot of information in the webinar slide pack, so do download it uh, alongside watching the video because I think you'll get some really rich information from it. There's a lot of resources out there. Ultimately, we're reliant on you as champions to help us have these conversations, to help share with your communities these issues, and particularly for you as PLUS champions, to help us make every contact count in Birmingham. So thank you for your time today. Um, thank you for listening. I hope it's been a helpful uh, seminar for you to be part of, uh, and I look forward to hearing the feedback through the team uh, for the next report uh, and through the next session. So. Please go out, please look after your own mental health and please help us make Birmingham a mentally healthy city.